Since the beginning of recorded history, India and its people have known how to live in harmony with the environment. Here thrives a culture steeped in more than 5,000 years of continued traditions of worshipping nature. A civilization that shaped itself out of the ways the human animal interacts with its ecosystem. A system of faith which promotes conservation of nature through respect. Jai Dev, Jai Dev, Jai Radha Krishna, Govardhana Giridhari, Jai Jai Gopala. Over thousands of years, India has devised ways and means to conserve forests, beneficial plants and animals by connecting them to faith. Evidences of nature worship are scattered in ancient sites all over the country. A practice kept alive by oral traditions, learnt and taken forward by generations. An ingrained habit, followed like an unwritten law. To this day, Gurukuls continue to impart traditional knowledge of ancient scriptures through songs, legends and folk tales. The human being is just a tiny speck in the divine scheme of creations. To be able to survive, he must be able to live in harmony with nature. the snow-covered peaks of the Himalayas, the enchanting forests, clear blue skies. Uttarakhand in north of India is also called Devbhumi or the land of gods. This is one of the many spaces in India where ancient traditions of nature worship still retain its purity in various folk expressions. See, Indian culture has had an enormous um, environmental ethic if you look at it and there is no doubt that uh, people across the length and breadth of this country had learned to live on the environment and it's not a it's not a historical accident it's also the fact that because they lived on the environment they lived on the land they lived on the forest they needed the water that they learned ways in which that biodiversity, that environment could be conserved by turning it into cultural practices as well. For the people of Kumaon, the divine presence in nature is an eternal truth. These trees are never to be used for construction purposes or for firewood, a simple faith that has nurtured many trees over generations. A philosophy that teaches people to respect trees was a simple yet effective move by our forefathers to protect the environment. People people हमें शुद्ध ऑक्सीजन नहीं मिल रही तो 
हमारे पूर्वजों ने कहा एक दिन तो कम से कम चले जाओ और हो सके तो कच्चा सूत के धागे से परिक्रमा लगाओ क्यों कच्चा धागा तीज, आप तीज नहीं चल सकते धीरे चलेंगे और धीरे चलेंगे तो ऑक्सीजन आपको जितनी मिलेगी उतना आपको लाभ मिलेगा धर्म से जोड़ा धर्म के बिना कोई कार्य सफल नहीं हो सकता Faith leads to respect, and respect ensures protection. Forests are the lifelines of the people living in the Himalayan range. They have forest deities or one devatas, who are considered guardian angels of the forests. The local tribes would pay their reverence to these devatas on special occasions. tribes living in Askot Pitoraghar district in Uttarakhand like other communities living in the same geoclimatic space their entire existence was traditionally dependent on forests jo banra ji log hain wo kyunki jangalon mein rahe jangalon se inko bhojan mila to ab inka jo rozgar hai छोटा मोटा रोजगार है तो जंगलों से ही है जो सूखे लकड़ी गिर जाती है और ये घास होती है तो ये उन चीज़ों को संभाले रखती है ये बनरा जी अन्य जाति को नहीं आने देती है और जितना इनका क्षेत्र पड़ता है वो वास्तव में वो सुरक्षित जंगल माना जाता है and use only dead trees for firewood a simple faith by many tribes like these have saved large patches of forests from getting extinct there was no internet there was no communication system so how did the people of the northeast communicate with the people in rajasthan and then with the western ghats all to evolve a common practice of managing forests as sacred groves and the only reason this happened was because this was very much part of what people needed to do for their own survival they learned that the forests were very important for their agricultural fields they learned that without the forest they would not have fodder which they could not give their animals they learned that soon as soon as the forest disappeared their springs would disappear this was not the age of the tap water this was the age where people understood that water comes from the skies and the forests are the are the ways in which you trap the water you harvest it you replenish the ground and it is because of that that all over india you evolved this practice where to keep that forest you called it sacred the country on the whole has more than 200000 sacred groves these ecological treasures are rich in biodiversity and preserve many rare species of animals and plants today Conservationists have realized that systems of faith could be an important motivation in conservation initiatives. Uh, we wanted to revive the Badrinath forest to its pristine glory. And in 1993 when I went there there were only 29 standing trees uh, in and around the Badrinath dam. The idea how to revive it in a remote place like this was a lot of people go to badrinath dam uh, as a means of praying their homage and uh, then we requested uh, the chief priest of badrinath dam to bless the seedlings which were raised there and offer them as vraksh prasad and the devotees or the pilgrims were expected to plant them in and around badrinath dam and on my last visit i can very safely say I saw more than 29,000 saplings of different kinds 
and the example of Badrinath Dham that how using religious sentiments an entire forest can be revived has now been accepted by UNESCO as a philosophy uh, for using, you know, to promote conservation. In Indian philosophy, man has been advised not to tamper with nature and to preserve ecological balance. The Bishnois of Rajasthan do not just believe this, but live this faith. For centuries they have put their lives at stake to protect their immediate environment. विष्णुई लोग हैं उनका उनसे बढ़कर हैं कि वो खुद तो न तो हिंसा करते हैं न नॉनवेज खाते हैं लेकिन उसके साथ साथ वो अपने एरिया में किसी को जीवों को मारने भी नहीं देते और उसके लिए और पेड़ हरे पेड़ों को काटने नहीं देते उसके लिए उन्होंने अपनी कई ऐसे उदाहरण हैं जिनमें अपनी जिंदगियां कुर्बान कर दी विश्व का सबसे बड़ा उदाहरण है वो खेजड़ली गांव का है जहां पे 363 लोगों ने सिर्फ खेजड़ी का पेड़ बचाने के लिए अपनी जान दे दी थी उस समय राजा महाराजाओं का राज था तो उनसे लड़ाई तो कर नहीं सकते तो उन्होंने सेल्फ सेक्रीफाइस का रास्ता चुना सभी गांव के लोग एक जगह इकट्ठे हुए और उनमें से तय हुआ कि अपन अपना गला कटा देंगे लेकिन पेड़ नहीं कटेंगे तो उसमें सबसे पहले जो एक औरत थी अमृता देवी उन्होंने डिसाइड किया कि सबसे पहले मैं जाऊंगी और मैं मेरी जान दूंगी तो सबसे पहले अमृता देवी ने पेड़ के चिप गई और उसका गला काट दिया गया हमारे जो विष्णुई धर्म है उसमें जो मुख्य जो मूल मोटो है वो है जीव दया पालनी रूख लीलो नहीं खावे प्रत्येक प्राणी पे आप दया करोगे तो सृष्टि अपना आप बच जाएगी और ये अपन ऐसा करके अपन कोई उन जीवों पे एहसान नहीं कर रहे हैं अपन पेड़ पे कोई एहसान नहीं करें प्रकृति का एक सर्किल होता है और उस इंसान भी उस सर्किल का एक पार्ट है Their philosophy promotes an inclusive life with nature and all its aspects. The Bishnois fiercely protect the plants and animals in their neighborhood from intruders. I've been so impressed by what I've learned because at the time when we were industrializing the world, the Bishnoi were um, communicating with nature, treating it with respect worshipping um, trees and rescuing animals um, and hopefully write about my experience in order to inspire people from my country or anywhere else to think about their relationship with the environment because here the Birshnoi take great responsibility for their environment around them even to the point where they would be happy to sacrifice their own life for a tree or an animal and that's been done many, many times. Baijnath, a 12th century temple on the banks of the river Gomati, houses a pond brimming with hordes of fish. Visitors are often found feeding them, as the fish is considered to be the Vahana, or the carrier of the temple goddess. जो ये मछलियां हैं ये माँ भगवती के वाहन हैं और इनकी रक्षा ही हमारा धर्म है This is yet another unique social device that our ancestors created to maintain ecological balance. They connected animal life forms to the divine to protect them. Intelligent rulers of the past have used this device to safeguard endangered wild animals. The Nilgai, as, as uh, some of you would know, was previously known as Nilghor. 
because it looks like a horse-like animal. It actually belongs to the antelope uh, group of animals, more closely related to the deer family. Nilgai is, is known to be a very notorious animal because it destroys crops. So people, you know, farmers especially, usually tend to ward it off or even kill it. The species has survived in the development of Delhi. Part of the reason for that is, is the fondness of this animal by Emperor Aurangzeb. And he called it, uh, he attributed the name Gai or the cow which is actually sacred to the Hindu community. Doing just that one step of calling it a Nilgai, you know, made these people from, you know, Nilgai hunters to Nilgai preservers. They started conserving Nilgai, they started respecting it. If Hindus protected animals through divine linkages, Buddhism preached ahimsa or non-violence to prevent destruction and promote conservation of all forms of life. Even today, the holy tree at Bodhgaya is revered as a symbol of Buddha's attainment of enlightenment. Devotees pay homage to the tree as a link to the divine bond. In ancient Indian literature, the role of the river is hailed as the shaper of people's lives, as a material sustainer and a spiritual nourisher. The mighty Ganges is the most respected river of India. Ganges ही जुड़ी हुई नहीं बल्कि चारों धर्मों से जुड़ी हुई है सभी धर्म इसको मानते हैं बोले हिंदू मुस्लिम सिख ईसाई हम सभी भाई भाई इसको प्रमाणित जो करती है वो मां भगवती गंगा करती है क्योंकि चाहे सिख हो चाहे ईसाई हो चाहे मुस्लिम हो चाहे हिंदू हो सभी भगवती को मानते हैं सभी भगवती में आस्था रखते हैं Karnabas, a provincial Uttar Pradesh town, has witnessed a silent revolution in conservation in the last decade. A revolution that brings together faith and science. When a group of scientists from WWF wanted to save the near-extinct Gangetic dolphin, they realized that scientific reasoning was not enough to convince the local villagers. यहाँ पे जो religious leaders हैं, जो साधुस हैं, जो सन्यासी हैं, उनके बहुत ज़्यादा उनको जो है लोग मानते हैं। हमने कोशिश करी कि ये जो साधु सन्यासी हैं, इनको हम समझाएं। आप जो है एक religious sentiment लेके लोगों के पास इसको प्रवचन देके लोगों को समझाने की कोशिश करें और जिससे कि उनकी सहमति आई और उन्होंने जो गांव-गांव जाके हमारी जो भाषा थी साइंटिफिक भाषा उसको जो है उसको रिलीजियस सेंटीमेंट में ढाल के लोगों के पास पहुंचाने की उन्होंने कोशिश करी उसका परिणाम ये निकला कि अब जो है इस क्षेत्र में डॉल्फिन की संख्या में काफी वृद्धि आई है और हम सारे क्रेडिट जो है गांव वालों को देते हैं क्योंकि एक कम्युनिटी पार्टिसिपेशन से ही ये संभव हो सका this little town boasts of an increase in dolphin population and is home to rare migratory birds. Reverence to the Ganga is a common phenomenon in India. Paying homage to the mighty river is an inherent practice and it acquires special significance in Varanasi. Varanasi for ages has been the great melting pot of Indian culture. Every evening in Varanasi, scores of people gather at the river banks to witness a living tradition of nature worship, paying homage to the river goddess. Devotees claim this to be a centuries-old tradition that celebrates mankind's togetherness with nature. The Aarti, which concludes by waving the fire at the devotees, is a symbolic worship of this holistic existence. Yeah. 
Varanasi in many ways is a confluence of India's ingrained system of environmental consciousness. The entire city faces the east as a mark of respect to the rising sun. India worships the sun as the harbinger and protector of life on earth. The sun temple at Kosi is more than a thousand years old. People doing a Surya Namaskar to pay their gratitude to the rising sun is a common sight across the length and breadth of the country. The Gayatri Mantra, one of the most sacred Hindu mantras, is dedicated to the sun. The Indian philosophy is steeped with the awareness that the great forces of nature, the earth, the sky, the air, the water and fire, are crucial to all life forms on earth. Understanding them and protecting their purity is crucial for protecting our own existence. The whole concept was that here was a part of the environment which was essential and critical for my being. In our modern interest of environmentalism, we don't understand that ethic and that culture which is so integral because without ethic and without that culture, you can't protect environment. You can only introduce a technology, but you can't protect the environment. And I think that really is, is the, is the en enormous wealth of wisdom that we've had in India. Even today, a nation and its people pay tribute to a system of thought that respects ecological balance above everything else. Because without their working together, life would not be possible. If we are to survive, we need to respect nature, not tamper with it. That's intelligence. That's prudence, and that is what being civilized is all about. <laughs>